Welcome back. It's been another six weeks and it's time for Rust 1.73. As usual, I have a set of examples on GitHub that are linked in the description if you would like to run any of these examples yourself. Let's start off with the new panic messaging format. In the new panic example, we have a file, which is ferris.txt, and we just call a panic. Oh no, file not found. We aren't doing anything, we're just panicking. In Cargo 1.72, all of this goes on one line. It's kind of a little hard to read. In Rust 1.73, you can see that the thread main panicked at is on one line, and then the custom panic message is on a different line. This makes the custom message much easier to read, and this change isn't just in the panic macro, but also for things like assert equals. This will lead to more readable failing test output. And as you can see in the new panic assert example, we've got an assert equals where these two emoji are not equal with a custom message, and we've got left, right, Ferris is not a fish, right after the right value. But in 1.73, left and right are sort of left alone on their own lines now, and our custom message shows up above them. This is much easier to read in my opinion and a wonderful change. Next, we've got the thread local init example. And this contains a number of newly stabilized APIs for things like thread local cells. In our case, this is things like set, take, get, and replace. But if you don't know what thread local state is, this may not mean a lot to you. So let's take a look at what this does when we run it. So we're using some data structures called cells here. We're bringing in standard thread from the standard library, and we have duration. If you've seen static items before, you may think that things is one of a kind for our entire program. In this case, we're storing a cell of a vec i32, which is initialized as cell new vec new. So we get an empty vec inside of a cell. Now note that we do have the thread local macro around it. This is going to make the things initialized in a thread local way. So what does this mean in practice? In this case, we have things that we set to 5, 10, 15. Then we spawn a thread. We take something out of things. We iterate over things a bunch of times, setting each of the values. Then we take again. Then we take again. We join our thread with the main thread so that it completes and expect it to complete because it returns a result. And then we take again. So the output that we get here for the first things.take on line 11, right inside of our thread, is an empty vec. And that seems slightly counterintuitive because if you have used static items in the past, there's usually only one of them. So if we set on things, that means that things should have this value. But with thread local initialization, what happens is that we have the main thread and things get initialized for the main thread. And then we have this other thread that we're spawning and things will get initialized for that as well. So this things in here is a brand new one compared to this one out here. So the take function will take the value out of things and set the default, which for this first instantiation doesn't matter. Then we set in a loop things.set to some vec. So in this case, it's i and i times two. This ends up with nine and 18, which we can see here. So things.take takes nothing out. We get an empty vec, then we set, then we take and we take again. When we take the first time, we get things with a value of nine and 18. And because take sets the default, it'll set it back to the empty array or the empty vec. Now, when we are done with our thread, because join joins that thread with our main thread and makes sure it finishes executing, we then run things.take again after we've done all of this other work. And the output we get is what we initialized it to up at the top. And this is because things outside of the thread scope are the ones that are related. It's thread local, right? So we've got things in main here, which is the same as this things on the bottom outside of the scope. And any things inside of this thread is a different things. It's thread local. So this is a very cool idea. I encourage you to play around with this a little bit, especially if you haven't seen this before. Try commenting out some of the takes, setting the value from different places and seeing what happens but these API changes are quite nice, or these stabilizations are quite nice. Next, we've got arc file. So the new thing about arc file is that the read trait, the write trait, and the seek trait are implemented for arc files. That's this type right here, arc file. And this is possible because a shared reference to a file still allows us to read and write to that file. So if we run this with 1.72, the code on the left here doesn't work because we cannot borrow the data in the arc as mutable. If we comment this out, then we just have a file and we can do file read to string. And that of course works as does doing the same on a shared reference to a file. It will also read that file. And because this is implemented on a shared reference to a file and an arc will vend us out a shared reference to that file, if we try to access the inner value, the arc version now works in Rust 1.73. So the actual implementations here were moved from the actual file type into the shared reference to a file type, and the file and the arc file implementations delegate to that shared reference. 
And finally, a new warning. In 1.72, you could take a reference and you could clone that reference. On the left-hand side here, we have some unit struct, doesn't matter. We have a reference to that struct, and we're gonna clone the reference to the struct. 1.72, doesn't care, doesn't matter. In 1.73, we get a warning that says calls to clone on a reference in this situation do nothing. With the additional help text, remove this redundant call. And it gives us additional information. The type something, the struct that we created on the left here, doesn't implement clone, so calling clone on a shared reference to something copies the reference, which does not do anything and can be removed. And that's about all I wanted to talk about in the Rust 1.73 release. I would say thread local initialization exists if that's something that is interesting to you. And otherwise, just a general nice march forward for Rust. Nothing major in these releases, I feel like, but some really good quality of life improvements, better warnings, better error messages, and just generally improving again. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.